Now, the second big part to this strategy is differentiation. We need to remember that what works for one person may not work for others. This is both between people with and without disabilities, as well as across disabilities. Because of that, we need to meet the person where they're at. Now, this doesn't mean you can't do an activity that would single out a person, but it means you must plan accommodations and modifications in advance. This requires a little bit of planning beforehand, but the impact that it makes is huge. Examples of accommodations or modifications would be providing visuals, whether that's providing a visual schedule or making your activity instructions visual, breaking multi-step activities or directions down into smaller chunks, providing physical accommodations like fidgets, pencil grips, or using larger font. Maybe you have an individual who you know has about 30 good minutes in them before they need a break and so providing strategic and structured break times with the ultimate goal that they make it back to the big group afterwards. Or maybe it's providing extended time for an individual to complete an activity or task. There are a lot of creative accommodations and modifications that you can provide to lessons, activities, crafts, and games that allow for the participation of everybody. Sometimes we even need to differentiate how we call upon individuals to participate in activities. There's a research-based strategy called OTR which stands for Opportunities to Respond, and this strategy dictates that we provide specific individuals with a significant number of occasions to respond to questions during a lesson or activity. OTR is especially encouraged for children and individuals who struggle with behavior. Now, this is another counterintuitive instructional strategy because you may be asking yourself, so I'm going to give the child who keeps talking out of turn or maybe saying inappropriate things more opportunities to talk out loud in class? Well, the answer is yes, for a couple different reasons. First, it allows for the child's active participation in class. This is participation that you're ultimately controlling because you are the one calling on them at certain times. And their active participation allows you more time to provide positive reinforcement to them. Even if they get the answer to your question completely wrong, I'm sure that you can provide positive reinforcement on their tone of voice, their volume, the way they sat up straight, or even how they tried to give the right answer. This also gives an increased sense of responsibility for the child. It gives them a reason to be focused and, frankly, a reason to be excited about the lesson because they feel responsible to provide answers. Lastly, it provides less time for the individual to participate in disruptive behavior. I can't participate in disruptive behavior if I'm given an increased opportunity to respond and participate in the lesson. A great thing about OTR is that it doesn't single out an individual for their behavior. Quite the opposite, in fact, as it gives them more responsibilities in the classroom or in the ministry. Similarly, the use of proximity is another great way to not single anybody out. If I have an individual who is talking out of turn, or maybe not following along with the particular lesson, I'm going to utilize proximity to not single that individual out, but to bring them back to attention. 
If it's happening during a lesson, I might just so happen to stroll near that individual and stand in close proximity to them as I continue to share. Not verbally saying anything to the individual, but standing near them. If I'm anticipating that this might happen beforehand, then I'm strategically placing myself near them before even starting the lesson. These are some things that most of you are likely doing without even thinking about it. Well, now you know it has a name and it's called proximity. Lastly, some individuals with disabilities may be fixated on very specific topics or may have a very specific interest. Maybe it's an interest in trains or a fixation on dinosaurs. Incorporating these interests into our activities or into reinforcers that they might receive after participating in an activity is a great way to foster participation. It's another way that we can provide differentiation to meet the individual where they're at and use their great interests and needs and skill sets to help bolster their participation in our ministries. Structure and differentiation are very important ministry components. Both of these strategies can sometimes require a little prep work ahead of time. But the results are incredibly impactful to the overall inclusivity of our ministries. Providing proper structure and differentiation play a large role in making our churches a space for all.